It's the same thing, ain't it? F. <clears throat> What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and grief to bear And what a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer And all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. How we trials and temptation is their trouble. be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share Jesus knows our every weakness take it to the Lord in prayer are we weak and heavy laden cumbered with a load of care pray Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a solace there. Wonderful. 
way in a major we could do that and I guess let's try 411 that's just plain old G first second and last verses that's about all I'll have left <laughs> so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the says the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I proved him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh trust him more oh how sweet to trust in Jesus just to trust his cleansing blood just in simple faith to plunge me neath the heel cleansing flood Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I proved him more and more Jesus Jesus Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Now I'm so glad I learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, will be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm done. have your Bibles <clears throat> with you this evening, I ask you to open them to the book of John, book of John, was reminded that it uh, is Super Bowl night, to which I just kind of went, Somebody said they didn't remember the last time they watched the Super Bowl, and I said, well, I think the last one I watched Dallas was playing. Well, I made that comment, too. <laughs> you know, that's what I love about Jerry. You just, you just really got to study to figure out where he's at on things. Uh, thank you for the music, Jerry. Appreciate you. Stepping in on that one again. And K. Yes, especially K. Always at our service here. John chapter uh, 14, I believe it is. John chapter 14. How well do you know someone? How well do you know someone? Okay. How do you get to know somebody? How do you get to know somebody well? How well do you know someone? Or maybe we should say, how well do you think you know someone? 
You ever thought you really knew someone and then just out of the blue? Something happens, something's said, something's done, and you just kind of sit back and think to yourself, I don't, I didn't know them at all. I think that's constant with Jill and myself. Got to thinking, 20 years in July, she's put up with me. That's one third of her life. Seems like. <laughs> You do not know me that well. <laughs> now, I ask that question because, well, in John 14, we, gosh, whenever you say John 14, I hope that, that there's just this automatic surge within you that is, oh, yeah, that's the, that's the passage that Jesus tells. Let not your heart be troubled. In my Father's house are many mansions, rooms, dwellings. As he says, uh, believe in God, believe also in me. Father's house, many mansions, I go there to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you may be also. And if I go there, I'm going to come back. That ought to just spring. I don't want to look at that tonight. That's not where I'm going. I want to look at what happened after that. Because in verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Because Thomas asked him, he said, Lord, we don't know where you're going and how we can get there. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, verses 7 through 11, read them, read them with me. Jesus responding after he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Just like Thomas, where are you going, Lord? We don't know. Thomas says that. Now, Philip, in, that, in, in, in what Jesus just said, if you'd know me, you'd know my father. From now on, you know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father. It's sufficient for us. Jesus said, have I not been with you so long, and yet you've not known me? Philip, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe in me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe in me for the sake of the works themselves. He's essentially saying, believe in me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, that the two of us are one. Bob, it goes back to that trinity. We can wrap our mind around words, but how it all works, I can't tell you. And Jesus is saying, believe in that, but, you know, if or else, just believe in me for the sake of the for what I'm doing, the works, everything that you're seeing, you're hearing me teach, the healings, the direction, everything else, believe in me for that, for that. I, I like that when Philip said, show us the Father and it is sufficient for us. Show us the Father and that's good enough for me. You, you've heard that before. I tell you what, if you, do this and it's good enough for me. And Jesus reminds him, You've been with me this long and you still don't get it? I am the image of the Father. We, we are one. Jesus, in John's gospel, that's one of the continuing themes that is there. And, and he says, I have been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip. Do you know him? That's just a question I want to ask. Do you know him? Warren Wiersbe in his study Bible has, has talked about this word know. What does it mean to know the Father? What does it mean to know Jesus? What does it mean? The word know is used in John's gospel alone 91 times. Not, I didn't go and count all these. 
okay? The word for know is, is this word gnosko. Gnosko. It is the word gnosis, where we get our word knowledge from. And it is also what John confronts in that first John epistle of the Gnostics. They get Gnostic from the word Gnosis to know Gnosko. And the Gnostics were the ones that had the knowledge. Listen to them. But there was just one vital element that they were missing. They knew a lot of knowledge, but they did not know the one who knowledge came from. The Gnostics did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God, the divinity. Oh, they can grasp the humanity, but we can't get this divinity thing. He can't be God. So John, and, and, and he, he, that's what he deals with in the epistle of 1 John. But he says to Philip, I've been with you so long, and you have not known me. Because if, in verse 7, if you had known me, you would have known my father. If you really knew me, you would know my father. And from now on, you will know him and have seen him. For those in Jesus' day, if you saw Jesus, you saw the Father, an earthly form of God. Not God, but an earthly form of God, that human side that was there. Ninety-one times in John's gospel, that word is used, but it does not always carry the same meaning. And, and Dr. Wearsby gives us four levels, if I may, of knowledge. And I ask you the question again before we start. Do you know him? And everyone in this room can acknowledge and say yes. But let me ask you, on what level do you know him? Because you see, the first level, the lowest level, is simply knowing a fact. What's two plus two? Four. How do you know, Kay? Well, here's one, and here's one, and here's one, and here's one. If you take those ones and ones, that's two, and two, and one, two, three, four. So, so it's a fact. We, we know that. It, it's a fact. And we have that knowledge of facts. We have a knowledge of, 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 of facts. What color are the walls in here? What color are the walls? White. White. Well, I don't know. Maybe we should say what shade of white because what is white? We, we don't know. What color is my hair? White. Is it the same color as the hair or the hair on the wall? <laughs> well, you know where my knowledge is at right now. But it's not the same color. My color of hair and the color of the walls is not the same. But we will acknowledge it's a whitish color that is there. We can also acknowledge a fact the Super Bowl is tonight. We can acknowledge a fact that the Super Bowl is supposed to begin at whatever time. See, those are the facts that we, we know. And you can have that knowledge of a fact. You ask people today, is there a God? And the overwhelming response is going to be, yes. But it may not be the God you know. But the fact is, there is a God. And that leads us to the second level of knowledge. What is that second level of knowledge? It is to understand the truth behind the fact. Two plus two is four. Why? Because you can see it illustrated on my, on my fingers that is there. Is there a God? Yes, there is a God. I can look around and I can see all of creation. Something had to make this. So there was a God. Now, and I want you to understand also, even the demons believe in God. So it's a fact that is backed up with truth, or a truth that is backed up with uh, a, a fact. If someone were to hit you in the nose, it's probably going to hurt. If I take this hammer and I hit my thumb with it, 
I'm probably going to cry out in pain. If I take this hammer, Gary, and try and remove a gutter with it and it slips and it hits my head, I'm probably going to cut myself and have to go half stitches. Fact. And you know how I know that for a fact? I can back it up with proof. I've got the scar to show it. And I know that we, we laugh at that illustration, but that's my point. This is the point. Let me share in Scripture a very good illustration of this. When the wise men came to Jerusalem and they went to Herod and said, Where is he who is born the king of the Jews? Nobody knew, did they? Except somebody called a particular set of people. Who? Who? The wise men came, but who, who did they bring in? The scribes, the Pharisees, them smart people of the day. Fact, they knew Messiah was going to be born, didn't they? Fact, they knew that it was going to be in Bethlehem. Fact, they knew that it could be any time. Did they go to Bethlehem to see? But they knew, didn't they? See, that is, it's an intellectual knowledge. You not, you not only have the facts, but you can put those facts in a way and use them. And use them. I, I can sit here and, and, and tell you how to build some different things. I can build some different things. But what do I do with them after that? Because you see, that third or that second level... Is, is the intellectual part of it. First one's just factual. Second one is intellectual. And you can still know the fact and know the truth behind it and still mean nothing in your life. You know, my pickup, it says on the speedometer it'll go 140 mile an hour. I haven't tried it out yet. And I don't think I will try it out. I have a hard time at 65 and 70. That's just almost disaster fact. I know that the engine is big enough. I know the pickup can support it. and every, But I don't do it. So will it really go 140 mile an hour? Says it will. And here's where we have a lot of people today. Yes, there's a God. Yes, there is a Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was born, and he, he, he probably Messiah too, but do you believe it? I don't know. It could be. It may not be. It, it affects me in no way at all. No way at all. And I think we have a lot of people today. Well, as a matter of fact, the pollsters that go out, and they, they, they ask people, do you believe in God? Yes, I believe in God. What do you think it takes to be an evangelical Christian? I need to go to church once a month. Wow. We really missed it on that one. Do you believe there is a heaven or a hell? Well, I do. Where do you think you'll go? I'll go to heaven. Why? Well, I've been a pretty good guy. And, and, and the amazing, overwhelming response is, I've not killed anybody. I have not cheated anybody. I, you know, they go through the things they haven't done. But yet the Bible tells us there's just one thing you're supposed to do. There's one thing you are supposed to do. There is no other name or no name under heaven by which man may be saved except what? name of Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12. Fact. But yet they want to look in the other way. So you have the intellectual knowledge, but there's nothing else that goes with it. I have a ring on my hand and my wife has a ring on her hand. We're called wedding bands. And those rings are a token, a pledge of our love for one another. So we must love each other because we're married and we gave rings as a token pledge. But yet if I go through our whole married life and never tell her I love her, never do anything to show that I love her. But listen, when, when people are in love, they get married, they have a wedding, they have a honeymoon, they have their life together in the wedding band, so therefore they must be in love. That's the intellectual part of it. But the third level, the third level, Oh, by the way, it also says in the Bible, it's appointed for every man to die once and then the judgment. Fact. Now let's look at the third level. 
The third level introduces relationship. To know. To know means to believe in a person. To become related to him or her. To know them. My kids know me because I'm, I'm their biological father. They know. They're part of me. They know me. And let me tell you, when my kids were small, we'd go to eat at someone's house from the church. I held my breath the whole time. Because usually before I left, some the people that had us over for supper knew more about me and the family than I really wanted them to know. And you can threaten them all you want, and they'll say, well, Daddy told me I wasn't supposed to say this, but did you know that he fill in the blank? That's when to know. They know things about you that others don't. There's a relationship that is, is there. To believe in a person. To believe in a person. A child has a faith that's unbelievable. My child that, that, that knows me, I could when, when they were little, they could stand on top of the piano. Not in here, because we're not standing on the piano in church. But to move up on a higher elevation, and I would say, okay, jump. And you know what? Without a question, they jump. They jump. No problem. When the kids were small, I did what every dad does. You throw them up in the air and you catch them. And moms do the same thing. Ah, don't do that to them. And the kids just laugh. Higher, Daddy. Again, Daddy. Higher. They know you're going to catch them. So that is the no. That third level is a relationship no. You trust them. You believe in them. You know them. But another aspect of this word, biblical, is a husband and wife it, would, it was said in the Old Testament when they got married, he would know his wife, indicating an intimacy that was there that only that husband and only that wife knew and shared. So that I want you to see that third level of know is where every Christian should be. We should be able to tell God, Throw me up higher, Daddy. Catch me, Daddy. Watch me, Daddy. God needs to have done certain things in our life that no one else knows about, and it enhances our relationship with Him. Or maybe others know about, but haven't experienced. This card up here from my son. You can tell that moved me this morning. Number one, his handwriting is awful, awful. That nut fell right at the root of the tree, but also just, just his words. He's had this card for a while, and he has struggled the words to put down because it's hard to express and emotion. You don't know how much you've moved and touched him. He knows you and a love that you have. Losing a spouse, losing parents, grandparents, in-laws, and now a daughter-in-law has, you, you have been here for half of that in a sister, and it is made, you have ministered to me. God's word, Jesus, the grace of God through Jesus has carried me through those times that I can be here and preach to you. You know why? Because I know him. You ever know a secret? I know a secret. Well, tell me what it is. Well, duh. If I tell you, it won't be a secret. But I can keep a secret. I won't tell anybody. Hey, Kay over here told me this, and it was a secret. What did she tell you? Well, I promised her I wouldn't tell. But you know, your friends, I'll go ahead and tell that. You know what that tells me? She doesn't know me well enough to tell me she shouldn't tell me a secret. But God, he demonstrates his love toward us and that Christ died for us. Do you know him on that third level? Are you at that place where you know him? Matter of fact, turn over to, to chapter 17. I beat you to this one, Bob. You're still a couple weeks away. 
17, 3. I want you to hear this. And this is that third level I'm talking about. John 17, 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you. No, I don't mean you. I mean that they may know God, they may know Jesus, that they may know you, the only true God, and have Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That's the no. That they may know you. Jesus praying. He's, he's been teaching the apostles, and all at once he just stops, and he prays. And he prays and he's telling God, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son. It's time. The crucifixion is at hand. They're coming to the garden right now to get me. The time has come. Glorify your son. Uh, glorify your son that your son may also glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. That's the no. You know, I believe in God. Well, I believe in God, Jesus, and Messiah. I believe he's coming back, just, just not yet. Or there is to know. I not only know him, I know him from what I read. I know him from what other people tell me. And I know him from experience in what he has done in my life. And basically, without him, I couldn't be here right now. I couldn't exist and do. Well, of course, preaching would be a little difficult if I didn't know him. But I, I know him in that way. Do you? You're here tonight. And listen, I hate to say it, but the church competes against the world. And the world's winning tonight for Super Bowl in many places. But you know him. I know him. I can't wait sometimes, most mornings. I can't wait to open my Bible to what is it that God has for me today. There's that expectancy that's there. My dog wakes up in the morning, beats on the window. I let that dog in. And do you know what that dog does? That dog comes in and she dances and she prances. She doesn't jump. We broke her of that. And I'll reach down to pet her on the head. And then all at once, it's like she just turns into liquid. She falls down and her legs fly up and she wants a belly rub. And you know what she does then? She'll sit in my chair for a few minutes, and then she goes in and wakes up Jill. She'll go in there, and I'll say, Tiger, don't do that. She bumps that door open, and, 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 and depending on which way Jill's laying, sometimes I think that nose goes right here, and I'll hear her jump, and she'll, what are you doing in here? But she wants Jill up. Do you know why she wants Jill up? Because the morning ritual is she gets a treat very first thing. And you know what? When she gets that treat, it is like Christmas time for a preschooler. She gets that treat and she'll go in the, in, the, in the living room and she gets on the rug and she'll do a dance, turn around a time or two, jump up and down, and sometimes she may just throw that treat in the air, let it hit, catch it, pounce on it, and then she sits down and she eats the treat. And you're going, what has that got? That dog knows us. She knows when she hits that window, I'll let her in. She knows that I'm going to be there and love her. I just wonder, am I more like the dog when it comes to God? Am I that excited to see him? Because I know when I open his word that I'm going to find comfort that's there, that I'm going to find a treat in there. Or do I open my Bible and expect God to dance around and say, you know, you ought to be glad I'm here, God. You think that's silly, but there's so many people that do that today. Haven't you heard that saying, Lord, let me be the person my dog thinks I am. And here, that's that third level, experiential. That experiential part of our relationship with God. That level that is there is to know him in, in, in the most intimate of ways. There's nothing hidden from us that he doesn't know. Bring it all to Jesus. 
lay it at his feet. But yet there's a fourth. There's a fourth. I, I, I pray that all of us are in this third category. I, I pray that we have graduated up to that spot. And I think the very fact that you're here mentions that. But there is one other level. The fourth use of no. By the way, if you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians real quick. Chapter 3. The fourth use of no means to have a deeper relationship with a person. A deeper communication. Someone that, 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 that you, no, not your spouse, but, but someone that, that your, your, your best friend outside of the family. It was this level that the Apostle Paul was writing about to the Philippians in Philippians 3, verse 10. What, did, what, what is it that, that, that he says that I made? Well, let me back up. Let me put that in, in, in context. What things were, in verse 7, but what things were gained to me, these I counted a loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also counted all things a loss, all things lost, for the excellence of knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things. Now, Paul, what he's talking about in that suffering loss is as a Pharisee, as one that was the upper, he lost his place, he lost his prestige, he lost his power, he lost his respectability, he probably lost his family. Because in the, Jewish, in, the, in the Jewish religion, if you forsook the Jewish religion, you were as dead to them. And not only that, the Jewish people wanted him dead. And he says, I counted all things for a loss. Everything that he had, that, 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 that most people would take, it, it was nothing but lost. And he said, I count them as rubbish, as dung. They're nothing. Why? That I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Paul says, I want to be made righteous the right way, the right reasons with the right person in the right process. It's not the law that brings me righteousness. Now it is Jesus who brings me righteousness. He said, that is where I want the, the faith is from God by faith. And then in verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. What is it that Paul wants? Paul knew God. He knew Jesus having that Damascus Road experience. He knew the power of the resurrection to a degree in that he saw the resurrected Christ in that light on the road to Damascus. His life was totally changed and turned around. And here he writes this letter to the Philippians from of all places, a jail. A jail. And he said, I'm here, but don't be embarrassed about it. Some are trying to cause me harm, but you know what? Christ is being preached. Maybe for not the right reason, but even for the wrong reason, God can bring glory and people can be saved. And Paul is saying, these are the things. I know God in that way. I know Jesus in that way. But you know what? Let's back up to another jailhouse experience. Paul had. And where was it at? To the very people he's writing to. They beat Paul and Silas, put them in the deepest part of the jail, and then the next day they said, okay, let's bring them out now. Except there was a problem. They weren't there. They weren't there. The jailer took them home. And the jailer said, what must I do to be saved? And Paul told him, and not only him, but the jailer and his whole family. And they came and got Paul and Silas and said, okay, you can go. And Paul said, we are condemned Romans. 
without a trial, you take us out of town. And that meant the leaders and officials were now in bad juju. They were in big trouble with Rome if Paul made an issue out of it. And those very men that jailed him are the ones that escorted Paul and Silas out of Philippi. And I'll bet they couldn't get him out of there fast enough. And here we see Paul writing to the ones in that city that believed. And he's saying, you know, that I may know him. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. Not that I've already attained it, he said. I'm not there yet, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things behind me, reaching forward to those things that are ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. It takes a man that has a very special knowing, not knowledge, knowing to want those things. I'm at a place in my life where my what I desire is Paul's desire. I want to know him and the power of that resurrection. Why? Because the world will tell you the greatest thing to conquer is death. If you don't believe that, look at all the vitamins there are on the shelf. Look at all the commercials on how to look younger, feel younger, be skinny. Lord, I can't wait to get to heaven because whatever Jesus is like, that's what I'm going to be like. Whether it's with hair, no hair, fat, skinny, red, yellow, black, white, I don't know, but whatever Jesus is, I'm going to be that same way. But our world today, our doctor's offices are filled. We take medicines, we, we exercise, we do all of those things. What? So that we may live longer. I don't want to live longer. I want to live a life that's pleasing to God because I know God. I know what He has done. For me, and I'll do you one better than that. I know what he's still yet to do for me. I have been called a child of God, as we saw today. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we may be called children of God. And the world doesn't get it. Because they don't get him. They don't know us because they don't know him. But I'll tell you one thing we know. We know it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. When we see him, we'll be like him. That's where I'm going because that's my God. That's my Jesus and that's where I'm going to spend an eternity at and who I'm going to spend an eternity with because I know Jesus. And that's going to be a place where there is no more death, no more dying, no more tears, no more crying, no more aging, no more medicine, no more trying to please anybody. The politically correct police do not exist there. It's not because that's the place of heaven. And heaven is what, you know, if we had a perfect knowledge of heaven, there'd be mass suicide everywhere. I'm serious, because it would be so great, we would but want to be there. And you know, every day I live and every day I get to know God a little bit better, it makes me more homesick to where I'm going. But it also makes me sad knowing I'm going to leave some behind too. I got a Facebook uh, notification. Another one of my classmates from the class of 80 passed away. That's six in the last year. Six. And you want to know what hurts? I was one of the first ones to turn 60. And the others are just turning 60. And some of them aren't turning 60. They've gone on ahead. Now, if we can all go in the rapture, I'm good with that. But leaving behind, it hurts. But I know there's something... Something better. I know. Yeah. I know. Jesus loves me. This I know. Why? For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. 
Jesus loves me. And I know that from this book. Not Warren Wiersbe Study Bible. I know it personally. I'm not going to take a book's word for it. But it helps. All of it put together. Yes, Jesus loves me. Remember that as you go through this week. How well do you know him? Because he knows everything about you. Let's pray. Father, may we know you more and more each day. And what we learn, may it inspire us, may it encourage us, may it excite us. And God, may we know you more and that you love us. Be with us as we go out this week. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Bless you guys. See you Wednesday night.